Hey everyone, happy Friday. We are doing another Friday flows here and a, a little bit different um, style uh, comparing Tines to some more custom code and, and Python, which will be exciting to talk about, but we're going to do that with a new guest. So first uh, we're joined by Jesse. How are you, Jesse? Hey everybody, how you doing? Good to meet you. Nice um, to meet you as well. Would love to just start with your background, Jesse. So how'd you find your way to Tines and what's your role here? Yeah, so a little bit about my background. Um, I come from a computer science degree at uh, Rutgers. And uh, right after school, I decided to pursue a software engineering career. Um, so I was working at like Fortune 5 companies like AT&T. Um, <clears throat> and I was really immersed around like the cybersecurity space where <clears throat> I was in the uh, cloud security background framework, mostly with AWS, Azure. And I got familiar with the landscape of like what is what is important with automation within the security space. <clears throat> and it just really, you know, piqued my interest to stay within this field. Um, but then I actually ended up pivoting where I was working as a data engineer as well. But mm -hmm. throughout all of these experiences, um, I was able to pick up and learn programming quite a bit. Um, that includes Python, Java, uh, you name it. I, I probably have coded in it, like SQL, a lot of SQL. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, and then I ended up pursuing uh, data engineering after that. Yeah. Um, where I was doing it at Bank of America for around five years. Cool. And I loved it. I think, I think, you know, coding is, you know, a great tool to obviously work with. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. This will be a fun perspective then you've been on the ground, uh, writing code in some of these, these larger organizations. Um, and I'm sure maybe you still do some of that, but probably a lot more building in times now. So, uh, that's what Jess is going to share with you today is just those two different approaches. Um, probably writing, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but writing code is probably still far and away the most prominent way of building automations today, like just in the market as a whole. Um, and there's some positives to that. And then you'll highlight what what could be better, some of the advantages to using Tines instead. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. cool. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Sure. So what I'm going to show first is this story that I built. Now, what you're looking at here is actually what was pulled up during one of my interviews with Tynes when I was coming on. So just to give you a little bit of context, I actually am a sales engineer over at Tynes. And when I was interviewing for this role, uh, it was very heavy within automation. Uh, I never really looked at it, but when they gave me the assignment, um, the assignment was basically around triaging alerts as they come in from an e-commerce business. You have people logging in, right? And then you want to get some further analysis on who they are. Um, through some threat intelligence. And then if there's a high risk score, um, you know, certain people would need to be notified. So, you know, beyond just the context of the task at hand, I realized the important value of doing an assignment like this. Now, what the assignment basically asked me to do was build it out within times. Um, and then it did make a little mention on the on the bottom that they want an extra couple of an extra like enhancements. Like how do, how would you separate yourself from the bunch when you go into this interview? So I took a few steps upon it. Um, you know, the basic requirements were getting an IP address, uh, doing some threat intelligence enrichment, and obviously doing the notification piece. Um, so what we're looking at here is the story for that I actually built during my interview. Um, so like I said here, and then what we have here are called action types. So what I noticed very quickly when I actually started building this was how pretty it is. You know, I took, I was just dragging and dropping stuff like this onto the storyboard. Right. And then I was able to just go out to like APIs and, and just fetch information, um, <clears throat> you know, a little bit of a different approach than how I do it in code. Mm -hmm. um, I think within code, I have to know certain libraries. Like I did this assignment within Python as well, because I wanted to show and highlight the difference between the two. That was my differentiator. But right off the bat, like I said, I mean, this is very beautiful. I can write little clean notes that not only just, you know, people that are accustomed to engineering like myself can understand, but I was actually able to explain this to my girlfriend who's never coded in her life. So I thought it was very powerful that you can, you know, have that relationship with people who are not as familiar with automation. I can so, resonate with that. Uh, when I look at the hundreds of lines of code, uh, it's like reading a different language, but this, you could at least probably uh, explain it like a, like a fifth grader and I might understand what's going on. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, I can even do that now where, you just pull in an IP address. Um, you're going out to your threat intelligence source, like Abuse IPDB, to get a risk score. 
And then if it comes in as a, and then if it comes in as a high severity alert, you know, it'll trigger this part of our story and alert a sysadmin um, using text messages. Um, that was also a differentiator that I, I found pretty useful where, you know, beyond maybe just an email, like people oftentimes look at their phone. So like a sysadmin, maybe like on a weekend may need to get notified if there's a very high, you know, red alert that they would have to look at and triage, at least they can get to their computer and get a faster mean time to response. Um, so that was like some of the extra flavor that I, I put on that. And then of course, over here, like we did some object storage. Um, so I'm trying to get historical analysis every time an event comes in. I just want to record it for historical measures. Very cool. Cool. So the other part to this I wanted to show now that you've seen the story, right, is the code. So I'm going to drag this over here. And this was actually something that I wrote. Like I said, it was in Python. And, you know, right off the bat, you know, as clean and as senior level of a developer as I can be um, to try to make this as readable as possible, I noticed it's, it's not really easy for somebody to read this that is not familiar with automation. Um, just going back to the example with my girlfriend, I mean, before I worked at Times, I would get really excited about, you know, projects that I built and I want to show her it. And then I show her the code and she just can't wrap her head around it and not her fault either. I mean, I think there definitely is a learning curve to understanding Python, um, you know, and, you know, Python is probably one of like on the easier side of languages as well, I would say, you know, when you start getting into like C sharp and Java, it can get a little more complicated, but, you know, to the point here, I mean, a few takeaways are like, there's not as pretty of notes. I can't put pictures in here. Um, you know, you have to understand the readability. So like if I, it actually starts down here and then works its way all the way back to the top. So just understanding that knowledge is, is a bit of a curve. <clears throat> yeah, can you comment too on the, there's the building the initial workflow and then there's the maintenance of it. So if something were to break or you had to make a change, like can you just comment on what that would look like in this code and then what that would look like in times? Yeah, absolutely. So within the code, oftentimes you have to run it on your own hosted infrastructure. Like if I were to run this code right now, <clears throat> this is actually local to my computer. It's going to use my computer's resources to do it. Uh, oftentimes though, in a SAS model like Tynes behind this, let me just drag this over here. You know, this is actually hosted within the Tynes SAS environment. Uh, so I would say that there's a lot better uptime when it comes to this approach. Um, and then Tynes is actually sitting on the back end of it where they're constantly checking their network. I mean, in this case here, I'm basically managing my own infrastructure. So yeah, that's another, that's another key takeaway. I would say that, that why I like Tynes over coding it out sometimes. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. Okay. You know, I would also add to this as well, where <clears throat> a big takeaway with times that I, I really love, and this this was probably my bit fastest mean time to building, is credentialing. Uh, oftentimes when I'm doing code, you can see right here, I actually commented it out a section for when I pass this along to uh, my interviewer. I actually had API keys just hard coded in here. And that's a big red tape, you know, especially with, um, you know, all the maintenance that you have to do when you're doing code deployments. Um, which is a whole nother level beyond just the infrastructure, but doing code deployments, you actually get flagged for access keys being publicly exposed within a within an account. Um, so what you would have to normally do within code is set this up in a third party vault. Um, there's many vaults out there, but it would involve me just basically importing another library up here and referencing it. So I have to go to all these external services just to do <clears throat> something very simple. But within times, I was actually able to store credentials very easily. Um, this we have a credentials vault within times that's all SHA-256 encrypted. And I can simply just go into my headers and reference it down here. And it's stored safely. I mean, I can't even see it. Um, so when I actually share this story with somebody, they don't have to know my credentials in order to, you know, get the context of what my automation story is actually doing. Um, so that that was that was probably my biggest takeaway of speed to value. And more around like security and safety when you're, when you're actually developing. So, yeah, that makes sense. And then just on the speed front, like roughly how much time did it take you to build the story versus to code the workflow? Oh, I mean, this story actually didn't take me much time at all. And believe it or not, this was my first story that I've ever built. So, I mean, adjusted the time compared to where I'm at now, this story actually ended up taking me less than an hour to build. Um, and it was really just me just understanding the platform. But I will say, while I was working in the platform, I learned it very hands-on and very quickly. 
Um, I mean, just these basic action types on the left-hand side help me just understand it with, and I didn't even have to look at too much documentation um, to get building versus, you know, the Python code. If I go back here, I, uh, you know, it took me a long time. I mean, I had to set up a whole email service as well. Like over here, I could just drag an email in here, like I do right here. And that's my email service, but because it's centralized at times, but over here, I mean, I had to go into AWS, set up an email service, get my credentials, um, which could be insecure because I'm using user-based security. Um, so, I mean, that whole setup alone, just infrastructure standing wise, ended up taking me like three hours before I even started coding. Well, yeah, that, that makes sense. And you could probably do the story now and even, even less time, uh, just yeah. with it, but yeah, pretty big difference there. I mean, obviously it's just, I'm sure folks like yourselves, like yourself, um, you know, engineers, want to build things of course like build cool new applications for the business so this is really just helping them do that faster and, and more secure like you said mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um you know i think I guess, I guess another piece to it as well that i want to just mention is that i've been writing a blog post around everything that we're talking about now and it should be coming out you know within the next month or so but i actually put the code in here and compare it to the story and I break down a bunch of comprehensive examples of why I like the difference between the two. So as that comes out, you know, just look out for that. Awesome. Yeah, we'll circle back when you post it and uh, I'll comment on this video and then I'm sure we'll, we'll publish it from the Tynes page as well. Um, last thing that, that came to mind as you were saying, you know, learning Tynes, could you, I'll put you on the spot, could you open up the Tynes University? And just yeah, absolutely. Folks, um, if you if you are watching this and you're coding and you want to try out Tynes, head over to Tynes.com slash university. And this is what Jesse has up to give you courses uh, from the basics to the more advanced folks on uh, how to use the platform. Cool. Well, thanks, Jesse. This was super helpful and um, fun for someone like myself to see. Like I'm, I'm definitely closer to your girlfriend in uh, terms of not knowing what the heck that code says, but uh, it's cool to see the comparison. So thanks for showing us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it, man. Next time. See you next time. Bye. Yeah, see you.